the position that we hold our body in affects our mind and the mind then affects our behavior and our behavior then affects our outcomes and then if we have positive outcomes we're likely to have greater success in the things we set out to do in our lives. So what we've done is we've taken this idea and we have modeled a health and wellness program based on this fact that what we're looking for with children is we want better outcomes for kids. If the teachers attend any of the classes, they'll see very simple breathing and movement techniques. These can all be used to calm kids down when they are getting antsy because they've been sitting in their seats all day long. They can be used for class transition when kids are coming in from another class into your classroom, maybe after recess or after lunch at the times when the kids are most rambunctious. You can use simple exercises that they've already learned in yoga to help pull the class together as a group. Yoga is able to help kids be more aware of how they feel in various situations and they learn that in the classroom by tuning into their breath and by doing various yoga postures. And then what's nice is that they can apply those same techniques when they're encountered with something outside of school or at home or somewhere in their daily life. They can kind of reflect back on what they've learned in the yoga classroom and remember how to deal with situations as opposed to a temper tantrum or a fight or a bullying situation. They're able to use these tools that we've taught them. In my mind, it was just going to be stretching and core building. But the other things that they learned from the yoga class was how to calm down and be less reactive, more responsive, deal with pressure, whether that's in the classroom or on the playground. And there was one assembly, a school assembly, where the kids were getting unruly, the sound system didn't work, and the whole student body was in the cafeteria and it started to get restless. And then the principal said, Jacob, go up there and do some yoga poses. So the sixth grade boy gets up there and he, he's on the microphone, he says, everybody do six yoga breaths. And then he raised his hands and they inhaled and they exhaled and a silence came over the room. And I was sitting in the back thinking, there's, there's something more to this. I think yoga has a really a magnificent kind of benefit for the kids because it leaves the competitive side of what physical education can kind of create. And it kind of challenges the kids to be more internal in the sense that they learn their own bodies and they're learning how to actually build up strength and become stronger and become aware of their breath as well. The kids are getting purposeful personal physical education. For team sports like kickball for say, they can call that PE but that's a lot of standing around waiting in line and it's my turn to kick and run and then I go stand in the outfield. In yoga every child is engaged, every child is breathing, every child is moving and so what we're seeing is that with that intentional purposeful movement, and this is data supporting it, their resting heart rate is slowing down a bit. And over time, if this becomes a daily habit, and at the end, good health is a habit, then we'll see them leave sixth grade with this ingrained feeling of, I need to exercise daily, I need to make good choices about what I eat, and that's our goal. Now listen, I have another new pose I wanna teach you guys. So. Inhale, kick your right foot up to the sky. Bend your right knee. Step it in between. Now listen, drop your right knee behind your right wrist. Now swing your foot over towards the left side. It's called pigeon pose. Drop your left leg back behind you. Good, yep, you got it. Inhale, and then as you exhale, walk down onto your forearms and just stay right here. Breathe in and out through your nose slowly. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your nose. Just notice what you're feeling. You may feel your hip opening. You may feel a really intense stretch. And that's why it's so important that we focus on our breathing in and out through our nose. Now slowly come back up onto your palms. Tuck your right toes under. Sweep your left leg all the way back to the sky and shake it out. and then drop down back into downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale. Now, slowly come up onto your toes, inhale. Exhale, bend your knees, gaze forward, either hop or lightly step onto your bottom. We're gonna land on our bottoms, remember those jump throughs. Try your jump throughs again. There you go. 
Sitting on your bottom, reach your legs out in front of you. Straight legs, straight back. Roll your shoulders back. Inhale. And then exhale, fold. Try to walk your hands forward. See how close you get. If you get to your shins or your knees, great. Stay there. Remember, we're working on our, for the fitness test for the fifth graders. We're working on doing that stretch. So inhale through your nose. And then exhale, see if you can go just a little closer. Butterfly pose. Bring both feet together. Inhale, clasp your hands around your feet. Exhale, fold down. Use your elbows to the inside of your legs. Maybe gently press your legs down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Slowly come back up. Bring your knees together. Let's do boat pose. Get into our core muscles, our belly muscles. Bring your hands underneath your knees. Roll your shoulders back so that you have a straight spine. Now keep the straight spine. Try not to round. All right, lift one leg. Point your toes. Lift the other leg. Maybe it's easier to flex them. So notice what is easier for you. Now, try to let go of your hand, let go of your legs, reach your arms up. Can you do sinking boat? Those of you who want to challenge, sinking boat, slowly lower down halfway. Inhale, come back up. Slowly sink it down. And then inhale, come back up. Don't come all the way down. And slowly come back down. Inhale, come back up. Hug your knees in. Awesome job.